Chapter 33, The Wonderful Thing About Christmas. You're alive, you're alive, William cries as he came whizzing down the street as fast as the wheelchair could spin him. He flung his arms around the Christmas Horace's neck and gave him the biggest hug. Thank you, he said. You saved us. You came back and you saved us. Mr Trundle came running down the street after William, his mouth hanging open with complete shock at the sight of the Christmasaurus. Dad, this is the Christmasaurus. He's my best friend, William said. How do you do? Merry Christmas, said Mr Trundle nervously. It's okay, he's perfectly safe. He's visited the museum tonight and he flew me all the way to the North Pole and we met all the elves and the magic candy cane and, well, it's been quite an adventure. Really, explained William. Where's Santa? Just then, Santa came flying down from the sky in his enormous sleigh and landed in the street next to them. William, William, William! What an incredible snowball you threw there. Perfect shape, perfect size, perfect throw, perfect timing. Well done, you, Santa applauded. It wasn't me who threw the snowball, said William. Santa and Mr Trundle looked completely puzzled. What do you mean? If it wasn't you, dear lad, then who on earth was it? asked Santa. William hadn't actually seen who'd thrown the snowball, but there was one person he knew who could throw something with such unbelievable accuracy. He turned his wheelchair round and he pointed his finger towards the sad, unchristmassy looking house on the street, the only house without Christmas decorations. The little bush in the front garden gave a wobble and out popped a perfectly perfect golden blonde twirls of Brenda Payne. Well, 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 who is this? I don't recall dropping into your house last night, puzzled Santa. No, you wouldn't, Santa, said William. This is Brenda Payne. She's on the other list, he whispered. Ooh, said Santa, awkward. It's okay, Brenda said nervously as she took tiny baby steps toward them. I deserve it, she admitted. And William saw a little smile creep into the corner of her mouth as she gazed at Santa unable to look at anything other than the impossibly magic man in red. The Christmas Christmasaurus stomped his feet in the snow and gave Santa and William a very stern look. They both knew what he was saying. Brenda, my dear, what have you done here tonight took courage and bravery. It showed a deep down you care and that you're kind and that have your ability to put others first. If those around you are the sorts of deeds that kids in the North nice list these days, then I don't know what are, said Tanta warmly. You mean, you mean I'm nice? asked Brenda, sounding more surprised than anyone. Brenda Payne, I hereby declare you are no longer on the naughty list, bellowed Santa in a very official sounding tone. Everyone cheered and whooped and Brenda gave William a huge squeezy hug. Well, William, Brenda, Mr Trundle, I think it's time for me to be going. It's Christmas morning and I really shouldn't be parked in a sleigh in the middle of the street like this. Traffic wardens don't like any Christmas holidays, you know. I put them all on the naughty list years ago, explained Santa. But how did you know to come back? William asked the Christmas Christmasaurus. How did you know we were in danger? The Christmas Christmasaurus shook his, head, shook his head. I didn't have that, but the reason he came back, William... Santa said as the Christmas Christmasaurus moved out of the way to reveal the remains of the stuffed toy dinosaur lying on the floor. You left your toy behind in the North Pole. I think he was trying to bring it to you. The Christmas Christmasaurus nodded and his tongue flapped happily out of his mouth. And that's a good job too. Or we might have ended up in the heads above the, win the hunter's fireplace, William explained. And everybody burst out in laughter at the thought. Then William noticed something red, white and scrummy reflecting in the sunlight on the floor next to the stuffy. A piece of candy cane. William tried and scooped it up. Only something was different. Something had changed. As he turned it over in his hand, he saw that the writing ran through it. Was once said the name, now said Bob Trundle. William's eyes lit with excitement. Does that mean, he looked hopefully up at Santa, who was smiling back down at him, that's my dad, that my dad is unvanished. Santa boomed in a very merry laugh, and William handed over the magic piece to the North Pole Protection Confectionery into Mr Trundle's trembling hand. I don't know what to say, gulped Mr Trundle with tears of happiness in his eyes. Say you'll come and visit, said Santa. Suddenly, there was a loud woof from behind them that turned to see Growler, the hunter's dog, sitting in the snowy street, 
looking very lost and alone. Hmm, said Santa. I wonder if there might be worse, some good in that dog after all. They all saw there was something that was different about the hound's eyes. Now that Hunter is gone, he looked happier and nicer. I wonder, Brenda, if you might be able to show him the love and kindness you have shown here tonight, Santa said. As he spoke, the great sh shabby dog bounded over to Brenda, jumped up and gave her a big, wet, happy lick around the face. Santa, do you mean it? Can I keep him? asked Brenda excitedly. Well, I think I owe you a present. You are on the nice list now, after all. As long as you promise to give him a happy home, said Santa. Of course I will. I will love him, said Brenda. And she gave Growler a big hug he'd ever had, which seemed to melt away the rottenness inside him. The Christmas Christmasaurus let out a happy roar at William wheeled himself round and he saw him face to face with the dinosaur friend. It's time to say goodbye again. You can come and visit us whenever you want to. Just be sure to let Santa know first, okay, said William, and the Christmas Christmasaurus nodded. They hugged each other and it was one of those hugs that only best friends give. Even though they didn't know they would see each other again, they knew they had a friend for life, not just for Christmas. Christmasaurus, Santa boomed, I do believe there's room for one certain dinosaur up front. He pointed to an empty harness at the front of the team of magnificent reindeer. The Christmasaurus looked at the sleigh, then back at Santa and his wondrously icy blue eyes. Yes, you heard me correct. You silly sausage, I've been flying this sleigh one man down for 30 years. I should say one deer down. Now, do you want to pull the sleigh or not? Santa said to the Christmasaurus, bounded around with excitement. Come on then, let's get you strapped in. The Christmasaurus leapt out over and lined himself up proudly in the front of magnificent reindeers. Santa strapped the enormous sleigh belt harness over his shoulders the sort of warm magical tingle ran from the top of the Christmas horse's head all the way down his blue snowflake covered back on the tip of his tail. Santa took a step back and they all admired the Christmas horse. He wasn't a reindeer, he was still different, but he was still magnificent, maybe even more. Let's go home, Santa cried and he jumped up into his sleigh and wound up the shiny golden gramophone at the same time. As William and Mr Trundle, Brenda and Growler watched his sleigh start so softly float to the music, a worried voice cried out, Brenda! Miss Payne was scurrying towards him, dressed in spotty pyjamas and a flowery dressing gown, her prettiness hidden behind a dark, a look of panic and worry. I heard noises, gunshots and roars, and when I looked out you'd gone, and Miss Payne froze to the spot. She had been worried about her daughter, that she hadn't noticed the unbelievably impossible sleigh floating over the street in front of them. Oh my, she gasped when she saw it, completely mesmerised, entirely spellbound, through and through. William saw the sparkle in her at tears well up in her eyes and thought that maybe, just maybe, Miss Payne's heart might have been thawed completely. Merry Christmas, Santa called as Mr Trundle, Miss Payne, William, Brenda and her new dog watched the sleigh glide over the snowy street. Pulled by the eight magnificent reindeer and a flying dinosaur to the sound of Santa's booming singing voice. As Santa glanced down at the sky above, William thought he caught a glimpse of the knowing smile he'd seen earlier that night. Suddenly Santa pulled in the reins and the Christmasaurus made a hard turn to the right, guiding the sleigh perfectly over their heads. William had to spin his chair round and keep a sight of them and as he did he heard an awfully familiar sound. Crunch. That was my foot, cried Miss Payne as she jumped back. He slipped an icy street just before he landed on a pile of snow. Mr Trundle caught her in her at his arms. William was just about to apologise when something stopped him. Just a feeling he got. Instead, he just watched as his dad helped Miss Payne to her feet. Thank you, she said, looking a little embarrassed. Don't mention it, said Mr Trundle. There was a funny pause and William noticed that since helping Miss Payne to her feet, Mr Trundle hadn't let it out of her hand. I'm Bob, Bob Trundle, Mr Trundle said. I don't believe we've met. Pamela, Miss Payne replied. Well, Merry Christmas, Pamela, said Mr Trundle, and with a silly tip of an invisible top hat, William rolled his eyes. 
but this time Miss Payne didn't ignore him and cross the street to get away. Merry Christmas, Bob, she said and blushed. Perhaps it was the magic of the music falling from Santa's sleigh like a blanket of snow, or maybe Mr Trundle was feeling particularly jolly as it was Christmas. Whatever the reason, William couldn't quite believe what happened next. Shall we? Mr Trundle said in offering Miss Payne his arm to dance. Oh, I, uh, I really don't usually dance, spluttered Miss Payne nervously. Neither do I, Mr Trundle said with little chuckle, but made them both laugh. She took his arm and so the second time that Christmas, William saw his father happily dancing in the winter air. This is turning into the best Christmas ever, Brenda said as she stood next to William with her eyes on her new pet. I never want it to end. That's the wonderful thing about Christmas, William said as his dad spun Miss Payne beautifully over the snow. Every second away from last Christmas is one closer to the next. The end.